maintaining independence in your own home is, is vital and I think it's widely accepted by government now that it's actually more cost effective for people to stay in their own homes than it is to relocate to a bungalow or to a care home or to primary care. So the, bi the big phrase is domiciliary care. Um, and to enable you to stay in your property, there are a number of physical challenges that people need to overcome. That could be getting into and out of the property. So we have a range of step lifts that will uh, uh, achieve that um, uh, objective. Or it could be a case of getting up to the bedroom, to the bathroom. And we have a range of through the floor lifts which can be installed and that will ensure that uh, individuals, particularly those who are in wheelchairs, are able to maintain their independence for as long as possible. An enormous change culturally has been that you now get funding for uh, disability access, particularly in the home, and that, uh, that, that's created a significant market that has uh, grown over the last, uh, certainly the last 20, 20 years. I think the properties in the UK are unique. I travel around Europe and uh, see the different types of uh, uh, domestic properties that require lifts and nothing is as challenging as the UK. You have terrace housing, semi-detached, detached. detached. Uh, it's a very hilly country um, and uh, so quite often it could be a case of accessing the front door down a hill or up a hill or maybe just a, a modest uh, uh, travel height. So you need a variety of products to be able to meet individual challenges like that and we have a full range to, uh, uh, to, to meet that challenge. We are a UK based manufacturer which is an unusual thing these days. Uh, that enables us to be able to react quickly to customer demand, uh, whether that be a specification change or uh, a fast track delivery. The products that we uh, design and install are first and foremost safe, they're easy to use and they are reliable and actually cost effective because there are obviously budgets that uh, people have to work with and so uh, the cost of the product, uh, not just the product but actually the overall project cost because one of the things that we offer is a full bespoke project management uh, uh, facility where we will do the surveying, we'll actually do the building work as well so it's almost a one-stop shop it, really taking the, the, the stress out of dealing with different uh, parties in, in, you know, in order to get the project complete. So we'll cover the whole thing for an end-user customer. The alternative is, as I say, moving, relocating, uh, with all the stress and um, upset that that can cause, moving away from family and friends. And the alternative would also be a, um, a, a very expensive adaptation to move down onto the um, ground floor maybe a bathroom extension kitchen so that you know the whole first floor becomes redundant which is not a good use of uh, resources. My father was 91 when he finally passed away and he refused to have a wheel, uh, a, a, a stair lift even though I offered to, uh, to pay for it and to get it installed for him, make his life easier. He refused but he, he persisted in struggling up the stairs you know uh, in the last few years of his life and I could not understand that and it it broke my heart to see that and so to, to, to be able to get people to accept that actually these products are there for their safety. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a statistic that there are 200,000 uh, incidents every year in relation to uh, accidents on the stairs in, in, in inside properties alone, and 90% of those as a result of a fall. So by taking the stairs out of the equation, whether that be through um, the provision of a, a chairlift, which is, which is a, a, a common uh, uh, solution, but usually when you're more acute than that, you need something more secure like uh, a through the floor lift. That gives me great satisfaction to see that product being accepted. And, uh, and that, that is the case now increasingly in the UK in particular. For us, on every occasion, the user of the product comes first. Whatever we provide, whatever we produce is always aimed at satisfying their needs. And we're always conscious of any special conditions that they might have in terms of their ability to use the product to maintain and develop their independence. I think there's a whole series of challenges that they face that are imposed on them, not by themselves. In general, they are just less able than others of us, and it's society that makes it a problem for them, not the other way around. The sort of challenges they face involve uh, mobility issues, uh, overcoming vertical changes in level, uh, overcoming uh, simple things like, like uh, trips to the bathroom, 
if you've only got bathroom facilities upstairs and you've no lift, it can be very tiring to take the stairs every time for somebody with mobility issues. Well, I think improving the quality of life for many people across the country as we have sits very well with, within our business ethic. Um, our foremost ambitions are to be the leading provider of equipment of this nature and to do that we have to be recognised by those who use it and those who specify it as providing the best that there is available both in terms of product and in terms of service. It is a challenge to get people to actually accept the product um, maybe it's a generational thing but uh, what helps the situation is that before we get involved often, often they are assessed by the social services so an occupational therapist would be a key player uh, in going in and, ass and assessing the need and actually there's a, there's a process of cajoling and persuading even before we get involved in, and obviously we then reinforce that so even then the lift will often be installed they'll be reluctant but it's only when they then finally try it and actually see what it actually does for them that they appreciate the independence it's giving them and then of course you hear stories of well I don't know how I managed to do without it. The lift's very simple to use the door itself is, is manually operated it's well balanced and takes no force at all to close as you can see it's interlocked to the lift so you've got complete safety when travelling in the lift the lift won't travel until the door is shut there's a simple push button operation which takes the lift up and down between the levels. The lift itself is fitted with many different safety features. The unit that you see on the top of the lift when that's engaged in the aperture will ensure that the lift won't travel if there's anything resting on it. So for instance if I'm here now John will find it impossible to travel back up because the lift's safety mechanism will prevent it from travelling. We've tried to think around all of the elements of safety that they are to eliminate all risks uh, to anybody using the lift or around the lift. If I can just demonstrate for you as the lift travels, any obstruction will cause the lift to stop very quickly. John can just bring the lift up again now. It's quiet in operation and very smooth. It's powered by a, a simple hydraulic pump and a hydraulic ram and makes uh, its use uh, absolutely very, very simple for anybody at all. The lift can be fitted with various options, although we've just seen John travelling in it standing, it can have a fold down seat fitted in one side and that enables people who are perhaps a little less steady on their legs to travel in equal comfort to those of us who are uh, ambulant. We work with a number of local authorities throughout the UK and quite often that is the route for uh, the individual to go because there's a need identified there are grants available, there's a disability facilities grant uh, which you can actually get up to £30,000 uh, to adapt your property to enable you to stay in your own home which is fantastic and that is assessed really through the local authority that you that you obviously are operating within. The vast majority of the products that we sell into the domestic market are actually through grant uh, funds and as I said so you have a disability facilities grant which you can get access to through your local authority, your local council, that would be the starting point. And then what would happen is social services would become involved, they would come uh, and make an assessment of the need. Of course it's means tested, but the vast majority of people usually pass the means test and you can get up to 100% funding of all the cost relating to the adaptation. So that's the, uh, the building work or the preparation work that's required to accommodate the lift and the lift itself and indeed uh, covering the warranty in the first year. Thereafter it can be down to the individual or still down to the local authority to uh, pick up an extended um, service contract on the lift because the lift needs to be serviced at least once a year. This is more of a utilitarian product than the lifestyle lift that we were just reviewing. It's definitely built for use by somebody in a wheelchair, although it can be used by those who are ambulant or semi-ambulant as well. We can provide a fold-down seat. You must be seated to travel in it. Once again, it's fitted with a lot of safety features that mean that the lift won't travel if there's load on the trap door. If any pressure is put on these safe edges in this position, you'll find that the lift will stop. Just so. Sue, will you bring it up again, please? Thank you. 
The lift itself is designed with uh, four different sizes for wheelchairs. And generally for wheelchair use, we'd specify it with a powered door so that it's easily opened. The wheelchair, as you can see, sits comfortably within and the user hopefully isn't feeling at all claustrophobic because of the open nature of the design. The lights in the side shed a good deal of, of light both within the, the lift car itself and on its arrival at the upper level. If you happen to come up into a darkened room, the light spill out from it is very effective for you to find your way across. In many instances, when we go to, to survey for the product to be installed, we'll meet people who perhaps haven't seen the upstairs of their, their property for many years. They've been living in a single room. The, the indignity of difficult bathing and difficult toileting, the indignity of not being able to use their, their own house to welcome visitors in a comfortable environment has been with them for some time. Once the lift's installed and they have access to all of the areas of their house, all of that indignity is removed. That independence is returned to many of them to be able to use their house to its fullest extent. It saves them having to move from areas that they've lived in for many years, areas that they've enjoyed and made friends in. The alternative would probably be to be rehoused in a different area of their, their city. To find out if you're eligible for a grant, and as I say, usually you will be, uh, you need to contact your local authority, your local council. They will then get in contact with the social services who will then make contact with you. An appointment will be made to, you know, that's mutually convenient and at that time the need will be assessed. So what do you actually need is going to be the key, the key uh, question for the occupational therapist. It, you know, is it a stair lift? You know, is it a wheelchair platform lift for the outside of the property, step lift, or is it a through the floor lift to get you upstairs uh, to your bedroom and possibly your bathroom?